Let's try and understand the two commodity case for cardinal utility approach given by Marshall. Now, to compute consumer equilibrium when you are given two commodities or more than two commodities, there are two necessary conditions which must be satisfied for a consumer to attain his equilibrium. Out of which the first condition says that marginal utility of X by price of X must be equal to marginal utility of Y by price of Y. What exactly does it mean? It is referring to a very important law in economics which stands for law of equi marginal utility. Now, what do we mean by law of equi marginal utility? By definition, law of equi marginal utility suggests that the last rupee spent on each commodity should give equal marginal utility. So that means that if you are spending, let us say, five rupees on two commodities, over here we have got two commodities as apple and mango then let us see what kind of utilities they are giving as or the utilities they are giving as for the units of consumption so when you consume the very first unit of apple the utility derived is 12 utils for mango it is 9 the second unit of apple gives you 8 utils for mango 6 utils for the for third unit apple is giving you 6 utils and mango is giving you three utils. Now, how would you find a common measurement of, of utility for apple and mango? So, there is only one number here which is common to both apple and mango. Or I should say that when the consumer is going to consume three units of apple, he is going to get six utils of satisfaction. And when he is going to consume two units of mango, he is going to get six utils of satisfaction. So this means that he is getting three apples and two mangoes to attain same level of satisfaction, which is six utils and six utils. Now this means law of equi marginal utility has to work out. But there is another angle to it. It is not only about getting equal utilities. It is also important that you see that both of these commodities which are giving you equal satisfaction are also in your budget. Now, let us say that I've got five rupees to spend and I've taken one rupee coin. So when I spend the very first coin on apple how much or how many units do I gain? I gain 12 units. When I spend the second rupee unit on apple how many utils I gain? I get 8 utils. For the third one I am getting 6 utils. When I spend my fourth on mango I get 9 utils and finally when I'll be spending my fifth unit, fifth unit of money on mango, I'll be getting six units. So, if let us say I over here did not have this fifth unit of money, so that means if my budget was four instead of five, then will I be getting law of equi marginal utility condition operational here? No, because in that case, there would be equal utilities available to the consumer but the consumer will not have the necessary funds which are required to purchase both the combinations and this is exactly what we know as budget constraint so budget constraint is nothing but it is a limitation of the money so over here how many units of x x in this case let us say x is mango uh, x is apple and y is mango so, apple, there are three units of apple being consumed and there are two units of mango being consumed. Each one of them is priced at one and the budget that you have with you is five. So, therefore, it is very much in your budget range. 
So this is the law of equimarginal utility which must be satisfied in order to achieve in order to achieve consumers equilibrium. So the last rupee spent on each commodity. Now over here the last rupee was spent on the last rupee on apple was for the third unit, the last rupee spent on mango was for the second unit of mango is giving the equal marginal satisfaction. So this is what it is all about. And there is another an, a very important point which must be remembered that the entire budget has to be consumed. It is not like that if say we were getting 12 utils for apple and mango at the very first unit then we would be saving our next three. No. The law is not about saving money. The law is about spending on two commodities in a way that the last rupee spent, the last rupee spent, I repeat, must give you equi marginal utility satisfaction. So, in this particular case, we had three units of apple and two units of mango giving us the common utils of six. And that is how over here, the law of equi marginal utility was satisfied. Now, to test your understanding, let us take another example wherein we are taking x and y. And please remember that you will not only be comparing the marginal utilities of x and y, rather you would be required to convert x and y into their prices. So you would be taking mux divided by px and muy divided by py, which is nothing but their prices so that you are able to compare utils with the budget. It is for that simple reason only. So, over here we are taking MUX and MUI which are of course divided by PX and PY and if you notice over here you are getting three <coughs> when consuming when you are consuming three units of X you are getting 12 utils when you are consuming one unit of Y you are getting 12 unit, utils. So that means you are required to purchase or you are required to at least consume three units of X and one unit of Y in order to have your law of equi marginal utility satisfied. So if instead of four you had two rupees then would you be able to find equi marginal utility here? The answer to the question is no because then you will not have any equal utility is coming your way from this particular combination. So this is the first condition of consumer's equilibrium in more than one commodity case that your marginal utility of x by px must equal marginal utility of y by py. The second condition is a rather simple one. It says that law of diminishing marginal utility must operate which you know by now would of course operate because as you increase the consumption, the marginal utility derived from each additional unit is bound to decline. Now let's take an example where we are required to consume more than one unit of commodities and we are having two commodities here. One is commodity X, the other one is commodity Y and price of X is 1 and price of Y is also 1. So we are taking MUX by PX and MUY by PY. So over here, where exactly are we getting any utils which are equal to each other? So X has got, okay, so X has got 12 and Y also has got 12. But the important question over here is that can the consumer afford to spend two units for X and three units for y. Does he have enough money? The answer is yes. So in this case we are assuming that our budget is five rupees. Okay. So when you are going to spend the first two units on x the satisfaction would be equal to 12 and if you are going to spend three units on y then also you will be getting 12 utils and there is no other possible chance of getting a you know combination here because there is no other utility which is common to both x and y so yes that is your equilibrium so in case of two commodities you need to make sure that your mux by px must equal muy by py and it must be in your budget
that is a very important point here. As we had seen in the previous case of single commodities, it is important that you also pay some attention to the other conditions which are possible and which you must explain in order to make sure that why did your condition support equilibrium whereas the other conditions will not get you to the equilibrium. So the first condition that is also possible is that your marginal utility by consuming X is less than marginal utility for Y. Now in this particular case the first case that we are over here considering is that if he is getting lesser satisfaction from X and more satisfaction from Y. So what will he do? So it is obvious that if he is getting less satisfaction from X and more satisfaction from Y, he will be continuing to purchase more of Y. And by doing so, he will increase the consumption of Y. Till the point your MUX by PX would become equal to MUY by UI. So this is pretty much the case. The opposite is also true. If he is getting more satisfaction from X, he'll of course increase the consumption of X till the point that MUX again becomes equal to MUY. So even if he is having his inclination towards X or Y, ultimately he'll end up in a situation where both of them are required to give him equal satisfaction and whereby also the law of diminishing or marginal utility is satisfied. So in this particular case, you need to make sure that not only is law of diminishing marginal utility satisfied, but also law of equi marginal utility is satisfied. Now, if you've understood, then let us take an, a quick quiz and see, and let's just test your understanding. So over here, you're having six units that you have consumed for X and Y, and there are two cases. One is when you have got 8 rupees to spend and the other case, the case B is where you have got only 6 rupees to spend. So let us first of all see what would be the possible combinations or where would you get equilibrium if you had 8 rupees with you. So first of all, as we had seen earlier, we need to examine where exactly are we getting equal utils. So, I can see that it is 16 which is common to both the cases okay and for 16 there's 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 another number that I can see and which is not 16 yeah, but that is 12 right okay and how many mon how many units of money do we have with us to spend it is 8 rupees here so if I spent 2 rupees on X and let us say 6 on Y then the utility that I would be getting would be equal to 12 and therefore this is where the law of equi marginal utility is satisfied it was also satisfied when you were comparing 16 with 16 but over here the budget was not completely spent and as per law of them as per law of equi marginal utility it is about the last unit of money that you spend so for case a the answer is two units of x and six units of y and for case b the answer would be one unit of x and seven units of of of, of sorry not not seven units but five units of why and that would be your answer and of course the second condition is satisfied here that is your diminishing marginal utility is operational and we can see that as the consumption is increasing the utility derived from x and y both are coming down so this was the lecture on cardinal utility if you have got any questions any doubts please feel free to ask we are available at www.gurukulforcombats.com Thanks for watching this video. If you liked our video, please share with your friends. Thank you.